Okay, so we've talked about all the basics so far. We talked about moving the players, the checking the game status, the game tick, setting up global variables, arrays, all that kind of stuff. We talked about how to style it, talked about the index and the game board setup, and we talked about how to move using the key down and key up functionality. Uh, and again, you can manipulate these how you want, depending on what type of game you want to make. And we've talked about the moving of the player. Now, moving the monsters. One of our functionality is moving monsters. So we need to call the move monsters function and it's right here. So when I start, you'll see that there's multiple monsters, of course, and they're moving. So then what you're gonna see is all I do to move the monsters is I start my, uh, I set up a variable uh, local to this function with i equal to zero so it's, because it's an array for these cats because they're identical classes. I say, okay, if the, the top position of whatever one I'm on, so I'm using the for each, it looks through the DOM and says find the first one. So I take the height of the board minus the height of the, of the um, of this, and this is just the current class of monster I'm on. It could be this one or this one. And if it's greater than that, then basically the direction of the monsters, the Y direction should be up. And if it's less than that, less than the uh, zero, meaning that you're at the top, then make the direction down. If it's left, if, if it's greater than the, the width of this, then he's gotta start moving left, otherwise he'll bounce off. Uh, he'll go through, sorry. And then the position of this, if it's less than zero for the left position, it has to start moving right. So if it hits this edge, it starts, starts to move right. Now we gotta check for something else. I gotta make sure that he, these cats don't go over the cheese. If you, if you don't care if they go over the cheese, then you can just comment out this line like this, right? You just comment it out. And uh, now you'll see that they can just go right over the cheese. Ugh, it's gonna take forever, but um, I'll just get some points while they're waiting. So now you'll see that he'll just go, see, he went over the cheese. Whereas if I put it back, right? So if I put it back, you'll see that they will bounce off the cheese when they hit it. Bam, see? And so how I do that is I basically, I look for every win that's out there. Now, there's only one. I've only got one class, or sorry, one ID of win. So it's only gonna do this loop once. So even though I have a J equals J plus one, it's only gonna ever do the zero case because it's only gonna find one that's on the board and it's just gonna go boop once through. But it will check it for the current monster. Um, now, yes, yeah, so it gets the class of the monster, the width of it, uh, its current position. And I'm very sure that if I move this over, I could actually replace this dot monster with this because it's currently on this one. So this could actually get replaced with this because I know this is what I'm talking about. And that way you can have different monsters with different widths and different heights and all that kind of stuff. So um, you'd be able to do that. Let me just double check, good. Okay, and so it checks the position. Uh, sorry, that's wrong. I know why. There we go. I have to leave it as dot monster because it's checking the width of the monster and the position of the monster with the position of the cheese. That's what this is, because we're looping through the cheese, uh, and so it's getting the position of the cheese and checking it. Go through this just so you double check that you understand how this if, these if statements work. All it does is, if it hits it, if it meets these conditions, uh, and you should really look carefully at these conditions right here, this is just making a box and seeing if the two boxes hit each other. Um, that's a big part to learn so if you need to sit down with me in class and talk about that, please do, it's huge. This is collision checking um, 101, right? It's a big concept in checking whether or not two objects collide. What you do with them if they do collide is up to you. Okay, then it sets it to down, right, up, left, uh, depending on how it hit it and where it hit it. And if you don't want to hit it, just comment this whole part out. And I'll talk more about error checking in the last tutorial. Uh, sorry, collision checking, because it's big. All right, then it says, you know, move the monster. So 
If the current direction is left, move that monster left at the monster speed. If its direction is right, move it right. If it's up, move it up. If it's down, move it down. In fact, um, since I've split up an X and a Y, that allows them to move independently. So you can, if you don't want your thing to have any speeds in the X direction and only moving back and forth, just get rid of these, uh, just get rid of the Y directions and you don't include it. And therefore they will only ever move right and left. Um, and so you can like pin down how you want objects to move or how, how you prefer them to move. Uh, and then the last part is clearly move them to that position. Okay, and the monster speed was set randomly if you recall before. So big stuff here. The big part is the uh, collision checking and then setting up how they're moving. So now as the game tick goes, it's gonna check each one of these and move each one of them. If you get too many objects on the board, that's where jQuery is not good for game design. If you have too many objects that you're moving and checking, it'll lag your computer, but for these small games, it's fine to do this. Okay, um, so if you want to add more objects that you want them to bounce off of, you can just, you know, if you would create a class of objects and you would just loop through them accordingly and set up their positions. Okay, in the last tutorial, we'll talk about the importance of error checking, and that's going to be a very big concept uh, to look through.